back to the cooker. He scores! Steals, cutting in, shoots, scores! The first one is definitely a highlight one. Top of the circle, the drive, scores! Oh, that was a goal! Can you believe what we just saw? It is the first and inaugural episode of Hockey Night Insider, presented by The Answer is Yes. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Nick Gizmondi, alongside my partner, my co-host, Parker Kalman. Parks, how are we doing, you know, buddy? You know, Nick, I, I, I got a, I got a, you know, Stephen throws Eton scoring in me in the intro. What's up with that? You know? <laughs> I, think, I think that... I that, immediately am pumped. I'm pumped for the show. All of a sudden, I just see myself get scored on by Ethan. So that's a way to start it. Well, you're, you're a goaltender, so I imagine that Ethan lives in your in your nightmares <laughs> uh, probably quite frequently. If you had to put a number on how many how many he's popped in on you, what do you think that would be? Uh, too many. From being at the Dangle Dojo, uh, being in Irvine, you know, playing over out there, just seeing him in tournaments and all that stuff. It's it's been way too many. And and you know, I haven't faced him much, and I can honestly say too many. So. We'll, we'll, we're going to talk to Ethan later, so we'll get his take on that as well. And, uh, of course, we've got a couple of wonderful interviews coming up for you here on this inaugural episode. But welcome to all of you, and thank you so much for joining us in what is going to be a very exciting uh, chance for you to really learn about what's going on in the hockey world, not just in Roller and in Southern California, but across the board. And as the show grows and develops, we'll have a lot of very interesting and exciting people to come on and a lot of good stories to tell. And, Parks, you and I were talking about that earlier. I mean, when you think about the game of hockey... I know I say it kind of all the time, no matter what I'm covering, but I'm romantic about this game and it's a family and it's a bond and it's a brotherhood. And, and that's what this show is going to be about. It's going to be kind of telling those stories and getting that vibe and sort of going in the locker room, even if you aren't in there. And for those of you that have played hockey, you know what we're talking about. And, you know, it's the family of it for me, Parks, that really sells the game of hockey. And I think that's what we're going to be able to bring here in, uh, in these episodes. You're exactly right. You know, I can look back from when I was growing up playing hockey, uh, you know, just tournaments, playing, you know, at the local rink, just with the cement, you know, skates, using the wrong skates or whatever, getting them from the, uh, from the lost and found pile. So, you know, where it's developed today and just seeing where it's come, um, all the friends I've made along the way that I'm still friends with from that first team that I played on, uh, it's exciting, you know, and, and that's exactly why something like this podcast needs to exist to be able to talk about our love for hockey and our love for the game. So I'm excited. I, I'm stoked to talk to our three awesome guests. And uh, yeah, it should be a good one. So just for you all to know, when you here's what you can expect when you tune in to Hockey Night Insider. You're going to get interviews. You're going to get a ton of insight. We'll be updating you throughout the summer, of course, in terms of where teams are at and what tournament scoring and, and what schedules are looking like. So think of Hockey Night Insider as your one-stop shop for really kind of anything, whether it's your tournament updates, whether it's good live insight into what's going on in the sport of hockey, and just breaking information and news and things and happenings. We'll have equipment people on. We'll have players on and, and not just roller hockey right we've got a real long list of of quality ice hockey players including nhlers that'll be joining us throughout the season so we hope you're ready for this and we hope you're excited about it because uh i can tell you that parker and i certainly are absolutely you look at the game of hockey today it's not just ice hockey anymore you know you got roller hockey even got ball hockey you got you know the barstool guys doing that big tournament down in pennsylvania you know, with the ball hockey stuff. So it's it's all over the court. I know the, the Anaheim Ducks do an absolutely massive street hockey tournament, you know, with all the fourth graders. I'll be coaching a team when it uh, that comes around in May. So hockey is such a broad spectrum these days, and it just is so exciting to be able to talk, to talk hockey with uh, all our incredible guests. Uh, you know, speaking of that one that scored on me, Eton, being on the show today, I'm excited <laughs> to chat with him. 
you know, got uh, pretty much a legend uh, from when I entered the scene, you know, seeing Dan Maxwell and being able to have a conversation with him. And then we got a newcomer with Jake. So it's going to be an awesome episode. Looking forward to, uh, to talking shop. So. All right. And we're going to get right into it. And we're going to take our first break here on Hockey Night Insider. But when we come back, we'll be joined by Jake Kapitsky. It happens in a flash. A hush. The crack of thunder. Practice paid off. Preparation made good. When everything we work to build takes flight in that moment. Time stops. Through clouds of doubt, we emerge our highest and best selves. Together, we climb every day. Together, we reach from within for a higher calling. Together, we soar. This is our purpose. Our season. Our time. We are Lopes. Rising. Back with you on Hockey Night Insider and joining us now, it is Jake Kapitsky, the owner of U.S. Roller Cup and, of course, the director of the College Roller Foundation. Jake, what's up, man? First guest on the show ever. How's that How's that rank in your, uh, in your accomplishments? <laughs> well, it's an honor to be here, gentlemen. It is, you know, right up there with some of my greatest memories of my best NARCH runs, which, you know, maybe if we have some time later, we can get into those. But, uh, yeah, it's great to be here for the birth of something new and exciting and something needed in roller hockey. And, you know, if you guys have been around the sport forever. You know that uh, in roller, we have to do it ourselves. And Hockey Night Insider is a great example of roller guys doing it ourselves and taking the sport to the next level. So I love to see it. Love what's happened. Well, that's a perfect segue because that's exactly what you're doing. Uh, obviously, the U.S. Roller Cup is something that is kind of growing and developing. But tell me a little bit about how it's different than sort of the other things that are out there right now, because it's, it's a big space and there's room for everybody. and There's a lot going on. Absolutely. Yeah. So the number one thing that I would point to about what separates U.S. Roller Cup from the rest of the field right now is our very motivation of why we started the tournament in the first place, which was with the idea of what if there was a tournament out there where the prize money for the pro division went towards creating scholarships instead. That was the original genesis of what became U.S. Roller Cup. Could we potentially create effective change in this sport and help grow the game if we took that portion of money that we were directing towards pro prizes and put it towards creating scholarships? So as that idea marinated and grew, uh, we discovered that going through the route of a nonprofit was going to give us some really innovative financial tools to uh, potentially make these forces even more powerful. And that led to the development of the College Roller Foundation as well. The other two things I would really point to about how U.S. Roller Cup serves to try to stand out from the pack right now is our players' choice uh, rules, which is where we have the players vote on the rules going into the tournaments. Things like what puck are we going to use, the length of penalties. Uh, we've adopted the jailbreak shorthanded rule that the uh, Premier Women's Hockey League is using as well. So we think that gives uh, players the opportunity to have a sense of agency over the game and really a real sense of ownership that we all already feel over this sport of roller hockey. And then the other function of that is that every tournament's got its own rules. And everyone has a different idea of what the best version of roller hockey is. And this is an opportunity to give it to the hands of the players to decide what is going to be the way that we want to do this sport. How long a period is going to be, you know, all of these different things. Right. And then the third thing that really is going to set us apart is we want to come to all the markets that have sort of become neglected as time has gone on, as the tournament industry is sort of the dynamics of it has changed. Our Winter Nationals event is a really good example of that with uh, SGA being the only two-sheet indoor uh, full-time roller facility within a 500-mile radius. And there hasn't been high-level competitive roller in that region since before COVID, which narches 2018 nationals, which was back at the cooler. So those are the three things. We are trying to develop more opportunities in the college space. We're giving players more agency over the direction of the game. And we're coming to markets that need a little more love. Now, obviously, Jake, you're, you're a newcomer to the scene. You know, Narch has been around since I was a kid playing in tournaments up in San Jose, down here in Irvine, where I'm, I'm located at. Uh, you know, you have tours that's set up on a national scale. You have, you know, state wars and obviously Narch. 
you know, what do you say to those tournaments? You know, you being kind of the new guy on the block, like how you want to establish kind of your uh, flag in the sand. Uh, in terms of how do we fit into that picture? Yeah, yeah. Being the new guy, Absolutely. how are you going to establish yourself? Yeah, right. So I think the really cool thing about the the dynamics between the three legacy brands, so to speak, and us as a newcomer is it gives the potential for somebody to take risks without there being any sort of inherent um, liability or risk to the legacy systems of roller. So we can come in and we can do things like deciding to try to dedicate 30% of the revenue that we generate and donating that to the College Roller Foundation. And the other groups out there don't have to experiment with their business model. So we're able to try to take new innovative approaches and if that works the rest of the industry can you know follow suit or not um it's it's really up to them at that point but we're going to offer something different and we're going to slide in by doing things new in uh in an innovative way that gives players uh new chances to play new things to do uh new opportunities for the next generation so i think that's how we fit in by by being the ones who are going to come up and do things do a little different and shake things up have you have you reached out and, and spoken much with you? You mentioned the the legacy tournament brands, and of course you're you're talking about the big ones like State Wars and Narch, mm-hmm. as well as uh, of course Wars. Have you have you had conversations with the the Tim McManuses and the Darren Goodwins of the world? No, not yet. At least not as it relates to um, U.S. Roller Cup. I saw Tim at the Nasty Cup just briefly and introduced myself and what we were doing, but I haven't spoken in depth uh, yet with anything. To be honest, I. Uh, I don't even know how aware of uh, us that they are. So uh, that's all to be determined. Now, now starting, is this, I'm assuming, is this the first tournament that you've started before? Have you done anything on like a local level or is this, you're coming out swinging with the U.S. roller cut? Yeah, so this is the first tournament that I'm starting at this chapter of my life. But uh, it's interesting that we led the show with talking about how hockey operates as family, right? Because what my family did growing up was we ran a travel series in the Southeast called the Coastal Cup. Um, I wouldn't expect uh, California guys to be aware of that because it was local just to the Southeast. But that was my life growing up. It was a different rink every weekend playing on a different team just because I was at the rink, you know, selling T-shirts or scorekeeping, this, that, and the other. That was that was life so i'm very very familiar with this life and um the u.s roller cup in some sense represents me revitalizing the family business and and getting back to my roots Ah, oh, that's incredible. I, I I knew of the Coastal Cup, of course. I grew up in Detroit area, so we that was that was the tournament series that uh, the Michiganders uh that played in quite frequently, actually. Yeah, did you uh, come down to the Myrtle Beach events? Because we always used to do tournaments in Spring Break at the, the Myrtle Beach Sports yeah. Zone. So people love going to those just because it lined up for Spring Break. Well, yeah, I and mean, it was all those Michigan guys trying to get out of the cold weather and thinking we're going to the <laughs> we're going to the Carolinas or going to the warm weather area. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. T- something else that you're doing, Jake, is you're you're, you're kind of going after different markets than traditionally are at. Can you explain kind of where you're thinking that is, and is that just a, another way to diversify a bit or kind of expose the game to new people and new markets? Uh, it's all of that, but it's also where I'm coming from personally. You know, I'm a Southeast guy. I, I grew up in the Raleigh area playing out of uh, those rinks that we had a Gretzky Center at one point and the Dream Sports XL two sheeter that existed for a while. They're down to one sheet. But um, a lot of that is sort of speaking to my own uh, wants and needs as a player, knowing that the Southeast would have a more robust roller scene if we had had higher level of competition, uh, pay a little more attention to these rinks. So I think it's something that we can do to make a lot of these uh, markets a little more robust because I think there's a bit of a uh, delineation between roller communities that are really engaged in the travel world and roller communities that aren't. And I think one of the ways that we elevate the quality of roller all around the country is by exposing uh, people to that higher level of competition and giving people that opportunity to engage with those teams, maybe you know play at a tournament and get picked up by a team that's playing at a nationals that their team isn't, that kind of thing. Now, now with with this new tournament that is first setting out, I know the problems that I get on a daily basis just running a team. So what are the problems that keep popping up for you? You know, I'm sure you just got, you know, email after email, teams bailing, whatever it might be. What are some problems you've been dealing with, you know, with the U.S. Roller Cup starting up? 
Uh, well, I guess an, an interesting one that I ran into uh, just recently was uh, people not expecting that the prize money would be guaranteed for the tournament, which we have a pretty substantial prize for our winter event. It's nine thousand uh, dollars for the first place prize, and the second place prize actually wins their entry fee back. So you essentially play for free. But I was uh, in communication with a couple of pro teams over the past few weeks, and they were asking if it was going to be you know legit or not and i didn't i didn't realize there was that part of the sell as well of uh you know putting the pro prize out there and then being like no guys you you could take the money home too <laughs> you know so <laughs> that was a bit of a surprise and then the other thing that we're really running into is uh this within our region being a newer event the struggle of getting youth teams uh, it's been pretty easy for us to get adult mm -hmm. teams and i think that the decision making process for an adult team and a bunch of guys going for a boys weekend is a lot easier uh, to take that risk on a new event than it is necessarily for parents who are making a broader family decision so getting youth teams has been a bit of a struggle in our region but there's also the macro level effect of um, from like 2010 to 2020, there was a collapse of a lot of rinks within the Southeast. We probably lost maybe 70% of the rinks in the Southeast over that time period. So there has been a similar level of deterioration of the youth programs in those areas as well. So that's been a struggle. It's an uphill battle. We're determined to keep going. And I think, uh, I think that's just part of the growing pains of being a new, a new tournament series. Once we establish our brand a little more and families are able to have a little more confidence of what they're getting into i don't think that's going to be an issue that we see market to market there will be some variability but uh i think those are growing pains for us right now and jake we obviously talked a little bit about the uh the college roller foundation but talk to me about the women's collegiate movement and how that plays into everything you're doing also absolutely yeah so i'm a firm believer that uh the initiatives and all the directives that we do within the sport should be aimed around making it more uh, re resilient, empowering, and sustainable, right? That's how roller hockey as an ecosystem becomes healthier, you know? And a big piece of that puzzle, I think, is developing the women's side of the game. So when I, as a tournament director, look at what levers I can sort of pull, right, where I can put my thumb on the scale, creating a uh, scholarships specifically for women's college hockey was one of those ideas that we came up with. So the Women's College Roller Initiative is a drive to raise $10,000 as an initial scholarship pool for women's college roller hockey in the effort to essentially start women's college roller hockey. Because the belief is that if we have men and women, boys and girls playing the sport in healthy numbers, then roller hockey as a whole becomes a much better place. It becomes a much healthier place. It becomes a more sustainable place. It becomes a more resilient place and becomes a more empowering place. So that's the idea there. Um, we believe, um, and I think this is a theme that you can see in a lot of different things that we do, like going to markets that need a little love. We believe in firmly planting our flag sort of against the tide. And that if you're gonna make effective change that you have to go out there and take some risks. And so while women's college roller isn't out there yet, we're willing to raise the money and then use those financial tools of the nonprofit to have it sit somewhere and not get eaten up by taxes, right? So that when we get four teams who want to compete for that prize, we're ready to roll and we can, you know, institute that as quickly as can. Nice. All right. I, I have two questions. So Gizmo mentioned earlier about being hockey guys. We all have nicknames and I'm staring at your last name here. You got to go by Kopi, right? You would think. No, actually, guys just call me Kibitsky. Isn't that crazy? Interesting. Okay. You, yeah, yeah, I saw the K-O-P-I, and I thought for sure this guy gets called Kopi, you know, on the ring. Right? No. Uh, when I was growing up, a lot of people would call me by my um, mom's maiden name, Turco. Okay. Uh, so that was, okay. that was a bit Turco, of a thing. You know, that's a hockey name right there. <laughs> yep. And, you know, the uh, sort of the, the family mythology is that we're somehow connected, long lost, like Ellis Island kind of thing. Don't really believe it. But, you know, that's what we told ourselves. <laughs> so, so you I, got I, you got you. The mother's maiden name is Turco. And then you got Kopi in the mix. Those are pretty two decent, decent hockey nicknames you're, rock, you're working with sure. there, bud. Oh, for sure. Especially because I was, you know, I was uh, what was he? He was the same draft as uh, uh, like Ovi and those guys, wasn't he? So he, I was like ten years old when you know where'd this Slovenian guy come from? He's nasty. Uh, he's pretty Absolutely. good player. Pretty good player. Yeah. <laughs> I had a I had a follow up question too. You were you were just talking talking about the tournament. You know, I I'm pretty spoiled here. You know, living in Irvine, California, where you know Narch and, and Winter Nationals with Narch is is held every single year. You know, what's the roller scene out there? You know, do you are you 
being able to, you know, how, how, how close is your nearest rink? Like, do you guys have the still mount flooring? Do you guys have, you know, what's the U S roller cup going to look like as far as, you know, being an attendee, uh, you know, traveling from somewhere. If, you know, I were to bring a team out from Irvine, California, what would that look like, uh, as far as differences with some of the big national tournaments? Sure. Yeah. So at least if we're going to talk specifically about our Winter Nationals event and uh, that specific facility, which is in uh, it's in the Atlanta metro area, probably about 30 minutes outside of town or so. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the beautiful new still mat floors that uh, we're all converting over to these days. But the best thing about this rink is that it's the rinks are sunken down like four or five feet into the ground and there's sort of a raised mezzanine between both of them so it's like the closest thing i've ever seen in hockey to playing in like like gladiator pits mm. and the fans and the crowd are hanging right over the glass and it, it's just one of the sickest places to play when that place is rocking because you can hear every single thing on that ring every chirp every everything every boo you know you hear it, it just it creates a really really raucous environment and it's a really unique way to uh watch the games as well because you're seated uh just a little bit above where you would normally expect but you're also right on the glass as well so um some of the, yeah, yeah. Some of the some of the beer league guys that like to throw a little extra elbow in there would love the gladiator pit. I just know it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It gets wild, you know, because because what you have happen is that you have an entire program or whatever, three teams hanging over the glass behind in, in one corner, and it's it's just, you know, it's absolute monkeys when when something happens in front of them. They're just going wild, you know, throwing bananas. So it's it's a great place to play. I feel bad for little Johnny, whose mom and dad are a little overzealous, though. They're going to be all over the poor guy hanging off over the glass. Oh, there. yeah. But oh, yeah. Jake, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, man. Congratulations and good luck this year. And uh, I know in the hockey community, I'm sure uh, everybody's going to come and support it. And thanks so much for being on as our, our first ever guest. Of course, gentlemen, it was an honor to be a part of this. And I look uh, forward to see the, the heights that you can take this to. All right, All right Kopi, my man. Same, same with you. Yeah, Kopi. We got to go, Kopi. That's a pretty big, <laughs> sure. pretty big shoes to fill. All right, we got more of <laughs> Hockey Night Insider when we come back. Don't go anywhere. More guests, more hockey talk, right here on Hockey Night Insider when we return right after this break. Back with you here on Hockey Night Insider. Nick Gizmati alongside Parker Kalman and the man, the myth, the legend, Dan Maxwell. Uh, he's got so many titles. I don't even know where to start with Danny, but uh, we'll go we'll go RHA National Director because that's what I want to talk to you first uh, about. But but Dan, first of all, man, how are you, buddy? It's always great to see you. Yeah, you too. Yeah, good to see you too. We go way back, man. Good to see you still around and glad they got you up here. Late relief here. You know, talk to the head office and got you in here. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's always good to be talking hockey. You know that. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll leave a bunch of our stories off of the uh, podcast because a couple of them, I don't know if they're rated appropriately for this. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have that clearance. <laughs> I don't think so either. I'd love to uh, hear we those. definitely had some fun. Yeah, well, we'll tell you about them. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, Maxie, what's, uh, you know, you're doing so many different things, and obviously you've been such a, a part of the fabric of hockey and roller hockey forever, even back in, you know, where you started in Arizona to now you're out in California. Um, there's a bunch of different things we want to talk to you about, Team USA, State Wars. But first of all, let's talk about RHA. Tell me a little bit more about it. It's, it's, it's relatively new. What is your involvement? What's it look like and, and what's it doing for the sport of hockey well people like what is rha what are we paying for basically all they know is that they when they play in one of the events and we have the major events the you know state wars and arch and tours and, and now of course our roller hockey alliance classic league programs but it's 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 insurance we have to have insurance to play in these venues people don't realize like 
Darren and Tim and Ronnie, they have to pay a rink and they have to have liability insurance. So we can have we can we couldn't have any of these events without RHA. It's just the way it is. You have to have insurance. So that's why it's very important. And there's only there's only a couple companies that do it in the entire country. I am the only employee for RHA. I make sure the website's up. People make mistakes. You know how they register. I got to do that. If there's any refunds, I got to refund. If there's any claims that come in, I have to go through that. But basically, it's it's just an insurance company that we start with, where we can have these events, and then it actually carries a excess medical insurance. If you go and Parker's playing and he gets hit in the throat and doesn't have any, you know, goes to the hospital and then he doesn't have any insurance, this will kick in with a thousand dollar deductible. So we have paid out. And you have to go through all the red tape and cross and T's and dot and I's through our, you know, not me, I'm not an insurance guy, believe me, but uh, through our broker. But at least you have coverage and, um, you know, it, it works. And it, but it, people just got to realize how important it is, you know, whenever they're rolling their eyes, yeah, oh, we got to sign up for this thing and this waiver. But we couldn't have any of these events without it. So it's very important. It's been going on since, I think I've been doing it since 2012. But uh, it's 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 essential. I just want to let people know how important it is, and you know. And then we also have back, you know, we have some grassroots programs where we've we've taken care of uh, storage facilities for all the floors, and we've helped out new rinks with skates, and we've done uh, you know coaching clinics before in the past. Um, but it's it's just out there, and it's trying to bring everybody together under the same roof. Well, I'll say from a first person standpoint, you know, it is, you know, I love that you guys do the yearly fees as well. You know, it makes it really affordable for, you know, being able to cover myself and being, being a player at all these events because I'm, I'm playing a lot of these events. So it's really, uh, it's really good to, to be able to, you know, have something that's affordable. That's also going to protect us. Um, one of those events is, uh, is your elite draft league under RHA yeah. and, uh, I just, you know, I'm going to take a little selfish question here and I'm going to say, uh, I want to, I'm wondering, you know, who's a guy that you have your eye on in the EDL and it doesn't have to be, you know, one of the goalies for the South County surfers. You don't have to mention <laughs> him. I know you've had your eye on him for quite some time. But what's a, what's a player that's got you really excited in the uh, elite draft league or the EDL as it's kind of, you know, come to be known as. Well, I see you're representing the South County Surfers colors with the two yeah, sweatshirts. That's right. <laughs> that. um, Happens to be the Terrapins colors too, so it works out. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it, what's what's funny is the high end guys. Everybody wants. Last year we had the high end guys, and last year you couldn't protect any players, so it was all draft. This year, every captain was able to protect two players, and of course they're going to protect their higher end guys. They have to agree to it too because we're all adults. I mean, it's a glorified men's league, but um. It's, fu it's funny because we, we have your high-end guys. Uh, this year, we uh, um, Junior and uh, Kawhi are playing. That helps, you know. Um, but what's funny is everybody knows the top guys. You have three or four on each team. Um, and uh, But it, it, you have these guys that never get to play with those guys, your gold, your platinum guys, double-A, senior-A, triple-A, whatever you call them, um, that just never get a chance. Like even, even on your team, Ruslan Patterson, for instance. You know, here's a guy that's a works here at the rink. He's always out there. He does his job defensively. Him and Jackson teed up for what four points uh, last tournament. Uh, I mean, last game where you guys won. And here's guys that get to play with these guys, and they're factors. I mean, they won the championship last year. So you have all these gold slash you know players that don't get to play with these guys, and it, it, there's a lot to mention. I mean, they all they all look good. You know, and and well, what's funny is the the lower end to the middle end has gone higher this season. The top end's about about the same. But what happened is, uh, the, you know, we got some more guys involved. The Logan brothers came out. They took over the the CPS guys took over that uh, that four hundred five jammers program. So they're helping. They're bringing up Kyle Matsumoto and those guys. They're 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 all brand new. So they're helping out. You know, they Matsumoto played for OC Blades back in the day. So all these guys are coming out. We're trying to get Rec Rock Shawnee there. Uh, Giz trying to play. He's back in the mix. Um, he's <laughs> I love out. that. Yeah, yeah. He came out. He's like. Oh, so he just came back from Sweden, but uh, we'll, we'll get him out there eventually. But uh, there's a lot of guys coming out of the woodwork. I know Eton. I know you guys have him on, but he brought some guys from West Covina over. You know that are like Garrett and and uh, McCory and those guys. So they're all they're all helping make this better throughout the mid to lower. So it's it's a good hockey. I mean, you know, you watch the clips that that R and R Productions put on that uh, that the Stevens putting on. It's good good clips, good hockey. 
Well, you, you've got R&R productions that are providing that for you, but there's also a $5,000 purse brought to you by uh, The Answer is Yes. So there's a lot of other cool elements that are that are involved with this that, that really kind of like up the ante and, and give it that, that gravitas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, that was, that was great that they came to us um, um, early in the year. And uh, like I said, that's a good start. I think we can even get that bigger than 5000 but it definitely makes, you know, makes a little bit of incentive. Um, they can play for that. They can get all their money back and still have a little money to go get some pizza and beers, you know, at the restaurant next door or something, you know. So, so it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a, a fun thing. Um, but what it comes down to really is it's good for the rinks. The rinks have dead time on Sunday. We have to make sure, and that's what Roller Hockey Alliance is about, that we have to support the rinks. These tournament series, everybody playing, if the rinks aren't being taken care of, and it's up to us as people loving the sport. If they're not business-wise getting taken care of, there will be nobody, even the vendors, the wheel mm-hmm. companies, the, the skate companies. I mean, it all goes around the local rinks. You know, Gizmo, back in the day when, when, when we were youngsters, um, <laughs> there was rinks all over the place, but a lot have shut down. So we got to be careful that we have to take care of the rinks, and that's why we have to make sure there's always programming going on. So I, I'm like last on the table. I, I take the dead time from Irvine, with the high school league on the other side, one rink I got the high school league going on, RHSL high school league. And the other rink I got the EDL league. So there's a lot of energy going. They're going to the snack bar. We're, we're buying the rink time. We're we're giving people employment with announcing and and uh, and refereeing and scorekeeping. So it all works together, you know. So uh, that's the main thing. And like I said, these guys that are playing in these leagues, they just love the sport. So it's for them, you know. Granted, I'm able to make a living doing ten different things, you know, making a couple bucks here and there, and uh, but it's all it all works together. You know I mean? Whether it's the tournaments, the clinics we do, the coaching I do, um, all that stuff all comes together and it's, it's a small community, but it, 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 everybody feeds off each other. So it's, it's fun. I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm happy. I like what I'm doing. Um, I don't know how much, you know, security it is in the, <laughs> because you're on your own. But it, like I said, I'm not answering to the man. So it's fun. Well, the more I've gotten to know you, the more I've seen how you know many hands you have in all these different roller hockey ventures. Uh, and I see you got the USA Roller shirt on. Uh, can you tell us something yeah. a little bit that's we got cooking for USA Roller? Yeah, well, it, it, it's funny because I know I know Gizmo <clears throat> knows about, about this. It, it, USARS has always been like kind of out out there, and it's not really been run by roller hockey people in the past twenty years. But this year and last year, can you year, explain to me yeah. what USARS is? I'm actually a little. United I'm States, roll, it out. No, no, the United States um, ro- uh, roller sports, I believe so, right? United States okay. roller sports, USARS. Um, and uh, what it is, their governing body for all roller hockey. I mean, all roller, like artistic, slalom, downhill, mm. all that stuff, figure skating, and they put the Olympic Committee actually put inline hockey because they have wheels on it under USARS. So they have world world programming and it's called the World Skate runs it now. It's a platform. And I'm still believe me, I'm still figuring it out too. I don't I'm you know, I'm not an expert. <laughs> yeah. I'm not an expert on all that. Because people who was the last twenty years like like I did it last year. Me and Beal did it last year. We were co coaches and we didn't really have managers or anything. We were doing it all our own and we got these kids last minute. But this year the huge thing is when Tim and Greg got involved and other roller hockey people that have a pulse on the sport and I, I, you know, myself and now Darren is involved. So this is great because these are roller hockey people that have a pulse on the sport and that's what it needs to be. So I can only see it going, getting better because it is a cool thing and people don't even know about it. I mean, for years, what's, what's, what do you mean? There's a United States team going to Argentina, you know, they didn't know about that. So now I think this year that we know earlier enough, we just found out when the dates are. They're September, they're October, or no, August 29th, I think, through September 22nd. So each group has one week where it used to be two at a time, but they only have one rink there. So they're spreading it way out. I'm going to be from, I think, September 9th through the 22nd. I, I'm doing that. I'm assisting Darren on the head, uh, the junior, and I'm also assisting Tim and Greg, wherever they need me to do. And uh, for the for the men's, so I'm going to be there two weeks. So it's you know it's going to be fun. That's but awesome. and um, they're all friends of mine, so we should have a good time too. And also you know get some good hockey. But it's definitely going to be promoted better. We know we know it a lot earlier. Um, and then in the future, as they they have a lot of plans now, they can in, start enforcing uh, and enforcing some of the stuff they want to do that they've been thinking about because now it's the roller hockey guys actually 
have a good uh, in charge of what's going on and making good decisions. Certainly one of the themes of this show is going to be that this this bond and this brotherhood that is not only roller hockey, but the sport of hockey in general. And it is about, and I loved what you said earlier, it's about taking care of all of the pieces so that everybody can continue to do this, get more youth involved with it and, and get more people excited about the sport again, like what the EDL is doing and what USA Roller Hockey is doing. And I think that even though the sport might have lulled for a minute, Maxi, I think we're seeing it start to come back up. And you've been a huge part of that, man. And I've always known you have been and going all the way back, gosh, 20 years with you and me being buddies. It's it's always been impressive. And it's, it's, it is yeoman's work and you're too humble to admit it yourself, but it's, uh, it's cool what you're doing for the sport of hockey brother no I, I appreciate it like i said i'm 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 fortunate to you know like what i'm doing and um i'm able to find little i couldn't do it anywhere else southern california definitely is the heartbeat of roller hockey and you know i i don't think i could do this you know where i'm from in pennsylvania but um i'm lucky that way but yeah i just got to keep keep thinking what can we do what can we do you know we got a high school league starting up again we're gaining teams we're trying to work with the ice hockey guys and I think they're starting to realize, you know, that, hey, listen, you can play roller hockey, too. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like the double headers this weekend, the weather. Um, right now I'm at the shop right now and it's raining and they didn't have any games. So we're crossing our fingers because I don't know what I'm going to do if we have to we have to figure out some way, you know, somewhere to play. But uh, but we do have double headers this weekend. We have championships for high school this weekend. So the rinks on Saturday and Sunday should be going good. And then uh, we have a break because we have tournaments coming up here. So Irvine's a real hot spot, kind of two roller hockey. It's one of the few rinks that go year round and um, three rinks gone. And uh, so we want to make sure that, like I said, those programs keep going. And, you know, Parker is one of the guys here. He plays every day. You know, he's always jumping on teams. And, and it's like all those, all those teams, you know, you got all these teams out here, uh, the lot dogs and all those teams, you know, you know, you know, they're just, they're just, there's four. There's a bunch of guys that just want to play and want to, you know, and they, they that, that's what makes a sport. Of course, you have the pro guys, but you got to remember that these businesses are made by these people coming and paying their league fees and making this successful, you know. And we got to remember to take care of those people, you know, because the rinks well, are you, you keep Good. You just keep doing what you're doing, Maxie. It's it's been it's been fantastic, and I I've loved seeing the revival of it. And uh, you know, I think it goes without saying. Any anything that I could ever do to uh, to help you guys or, or or what? I mean, you just say the word, my man. You're you're crushing it. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on this and making sure that uh, you know that the word gets out and um, you bring some credibility too because you've been around <laughs> and now you're big wig. Uh, you know, to come talk to us peasants <laughs> here. Go. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, but, <laughs> But uh, at least I knew you before that, so you got to give me some credit on that. <laughs> oh, brother, nothing, nothing's changed on my end, man. It's just a pleasure covering the the best sport in the absolute world in hockey, and having guys like you know you and Parks as my boys. It's uh, that never changes. I, I mean, I can't, I can't tell you the number of times I've told stories and fondness of the fun that we've had in Arizona and in Southern California, and just. Uh, but that's it, man. That's hockey. That's the bond. Yeah. That's the brotherhood. I, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world, buddy. And. Uh, uh, you, you and me, so, ride so or dies forever. Forward to hearing those stories. Yeah, well, we need, we need. Uh, we'll, we'll do it over a beverage. How about that? A little, little powwow. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Maxie, brother, thank you so much. Uh, we'll let you get back to work, but uh, we'll, we'll be talking with you more throughout, of course, uh, all these episodes. So we look, we look forward to catching up, and uh, definitely we'll get you back on and, and find out how things went at State Wars. Find out how things went uh, go in Italy as well. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Dan Maxwell, the legend. We got more Hockey Night Insider coming up. Don't go anywhere. Ethan Shavera on the other side of this break. We'll talk about uh, all of his prowess, of course, on the rink and his venture, the Dangle Dojo, when we come back after this. It happens in a flash. A hush. The crack of thunder. Practice paid off. Preparation made good. When everything we work to build takes flight in that moment. Time stops. Through clouds of doubt, we emerge our highest and best selves. Together, we climb every day. Together, we reach from within for a higher calling. Together, we soar. 
This is our purpose. Our season. Our time. We are Lopes. Rising. Back with you on Hockey Night Insider, and this next guest needs no introduction. If there was a Hall of Fame in roller hockey, this guy is a he's a first ballot get in. Uh, I have been watching you play hockey since you were just a little guy. Ethan Chavera joins the show, and uh, buddy, first of all, welcome on the inaugural episode, and secondly, congrats on all your success. I could not be more proud of you, bud. I appreciate it, guys. Good to see you again, man. Good to see you back in the loop, and. We see you on uh, the big screen these days, which is uh, very cool to see a roller guy start where he started from and end up where he's at now. So very cool to see that. Very inspirational. Um, but yeah, thanks again, man. Good to see you as well. What's up, Parker? Good to see you as well, brother. How you doing, Eton? All good, all's good, man. So happy to be here with you guys. Buddy, so much to talk to you about, but let's start with your new endeavor and this incredible project. Uh, and I'm obviously proud of the human you are and the family man and the hockey player, but you are continuing to do what you do and it's for the love of the game and it's the growth of the game. Tell me about the Dangle Dojo. Dangle Dojo, man, uh, kind of just uh, became like a, just turned into this thing where I didn't, even, didn't know what to expect from it. So. Uh, I have a, I work in the film industry and we do craft service, basically like some catering as well. So I got a warehouse, I had it all set up for my catering business and I was running out, uh, running out all the gear and stuff to other caterers. Um, I told the wife, you know, I'm like, I'm not playing as much hockey as I, I'm used to. So uh, is there any way I could buy some sport court for myself? So for one year, uh, I had this little, little warehouse just to myself, didn't post on social media. Um, you know, a year later, we opened it up to the public, and it was a small little space, 1,200 square feet. Didn't think uh, it was gonna, anything was going to happen out of it, just friends coming in. And word of mouth, man, the lady next door moved out. Uh, we got double the space. It's been a game changer since then. Uh, it's been, a, you know, word of mouth from all the hockey community out there, and people are trickling in little by little. So... Um, didn't expect all this. It was just more of like, uh, it'd be cool to have a warehouse and uh, have my own little, sh my little lane of uh, shootout <laughs> drills with with uh, special goalies that I invite over, uh, just to work on my hands and stuff. So, but it's crazy how it, it all turned out. Um, you know, as well as you know the film industry as well. It it uh, went on a strike for about six seven months, and we're on another one now with the camera. So. It kind of just fell in and, and plays perfectly. You know, I had all the time to work on this and try new things, and, and we're here now. And we got about 35 members um, that are part of our squad. We have um, five different teams from 6U all over to Men's Gold. It, it, it's actually incredible. So, um, you know, the cool thing about it is, you know, the hockey community, roller hockey, it wouldn't be possible if uh, I didn't have them put put all that time and effort into it and meeting all those connections and, uh, you know, doing the extra work that, you know, didn't basically, uh, I wasn't going to set myself up for this, just about building relationships and, you know, people are just supporting now and back and it's, it's awesome. So, well, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. I'm considering myself one of those special <laughs> goalies. You've invited me out there a couple times, uh, including, when Swaggy P showed up, which was absolutely insane, just an amazing event. Uh, you know, Eton, I, I got to know you a couple years ago. I don't know if you remember this, but it was at the Patty Najar Arena. It was for the uh, it was for the Christmas tournament that went on. You actually did a reverse Michigan on me. I don't know if you remember this, but I remember how uh, <laughs> I felt starstruck that Eton just did a reverse Michigan on me. Like I wasn't even upset, upset about it. It was something that felt good, uh, and I like bragged to my friends after. And uh, since then, it's been awesome to get to know you and uh, and be invited. And uh, I just wanted, I just have seen you know with the dojo absolutely blowing up since you first started, you know, opening it. I got to see that you know firsthand and with social media, you know, being out there a handful of times shooting with you. Um, you know, what's next for the Dangle Dojo? Where do you see this? You know, transforming. Obviously, you have the uh, the ninjas your team that you're, you're starting, but what's, uh, what's around the corner that we have to expect? 
uh, there's a there's a couple little things. Uh, it just kind of just been going with the flow. But uh, now where I'm trying to you know gather everything together, be a little bit more organized. Um, we're working on a new a new website where you know we're making player profiles. Anybody that comes into this dojo uh, is a member. They pay like a little fee for the year. Um, they they get included to special events that we have uh, some pretty cool things up our sleeves. So again, being part of the of the dojo, um, you know behind the scenes we're doing more social media and stuff so we're taking all our uh, video content and we're putting it on a page on our on our page here so all the members have full access to anything so if we feel turn if we film like behind the scenes at uh state wars um we'll throw that footage up there kind of like how uh, the nhl does behind the scenes stuff like that just to kind of get like intake of like how a pro roller hockey works and uh how we get prepared so just a little bit more in depth of um the inside of how we're uh, how we handle things, how we train, um, but yeah, I, I got a, an offer to go to a new new facility up in Pomona. So we're in the works there, where it's like a big uh, compound. There's skate parks there, retail stores. Uh, it's like a little little like we work where offices. So it's, it's a it's an incredible building that this, this family that uh, he actually plays hockey and they they recover uh, historian buildings and he wants a hockey facility there. So it's bigger than the dojo. Um, so we're in the works of like, you know, the cost wise, because right now it's what I'm paying is perfect. You know, there's no stress. Um, I can be really creative and, and try to get this thing moving little by little. Cause if you don't know, like rinks are super expensive, you know, like I've embraced that what I have, what this training facility is, it's a training facility. It's here to practice, you know, and a lot of players these days don't practice as much as they used to. And when I grew up, it wasn't practice for me. It was just me going out to a rink and just having fun and enjoying it day in, day out. So um, now we got this concept of the training facility. We have all these cool training aids that all these companies are making nowadays, and we have a lot of them. And so these kids can come in here and, and get a good workout for like 45 minutes. And we've we've put it to the test where, uh, you know, we've done like a, almost like a Zumba hockey type of thing for like 45 minutes, and these kids are just dripping. Right, so we're having fun with it. We're trying different little things. Um, I do have like an idea for a future events as far as like ice hockey meets roller hockey, because um, the rink that I purchased, it's removable. I can I can make a pop up out of it, so I can take it all out. Um, I can, you know, put it into a parking lot at an ice hockey rink, and let's do an ice hockey roller hockey. You know, two two ice hockey games, cut it in half, do some roller jams there, and then you finish your three games in the parking lot. Um, so we're working on uh, getting more sport court and, you know, just working at little deals like that. But again, growing the game um, and just and just building that bridge from ice hockey and roller hockey. It's like the way I look in and try to explain to people, I said, what's the difference of, you know, it's like telling somebody don't go play outdoor basketball. It's going to hurt your, your indoor basketball game in, in a way. Right. You're still getting those reps in. You're still shooting. Um, so for an example, just, yeah, just trying to get the. Um, just the awareness of people to, tra to train again, you know, um, and got, got an idea and inspir inspired by uh, Elevate 802 Swaggy, how, uh, you know, they're blowing up right now, right? They're popping up ice rinks in, in different states. And so I'm like, I like that idea, but let's do it for roller hockey, you know? Um, it's cheaper, it's affordable. Um, and again, it's fun. It, it's fun to uh, just, you know, try different things and, you know, help out the roller hockey industry as much as I can by, you know, just being a, a person out there to help out the sport by training. So it's been fun watching Swaggy P. So I've been with him for the last, well, obviously I knew him when he was a roller player uh, fully, but I've been covering him the last uh, two seasons on that three ice uh, in the summertime. So that's been, Ooh. that's been a blast getting to interview him and talk with him and, uh, you know, having him on uh, center stage on CBS sports all summer. Unbelievable, man. And I love it. I feel like, you know, something I've always wanted. I always thought, like, and it's so crazy. Back in the day when we did the Reebok videos, I'm like, you know, how would be, how be crazy, like, to go challenge all these goalies, like, intermission and stuff. And look at what they're doing now. You know, influence are going into intermission games and challenging these goalies. And it's just, like, it's unbelievable to see that uh, the NHL has embraced, um, you know, the style of hockey, the way, uh, you know, the, the way the game is innovating 
uh, with different moves and just getting more creative. But uh, it's good to see all of that, man. I, I love it all. I'm, I'm actually going to uh, that new tournament called the Wish Cup, where all the influencers mm -hmm. go this summer. I'm pretty excited for it for the first time awesome. and uh, to be part of that, you know, nonprofit organization. And and uh, you know, I hear all the kids just love it, right? Because all the influencers are there, and that's what it's all about. It's all about the experience and and just having a good time. Because like I said before, across other platforms. The hockey will be there, the competition will be there, but it's all about the experience and enjoying it with everybody and just making a great event out of it. So, I know uh, I can hear Kittle, Baby John in the background who agrees. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, where are you? Obviously, you're doing the Dangle Dojo, but you're still very active as a pro player in roller hockey. And I know how much the Palma group means to you. Specifically, I know how much the Nijars mean to you and what they mean to the sport of hockey. Because, boy, oh, boy, you talk about, you know, the big icons in this in our world that have really sort of kept the sport going, propelled it, taken it to new heights, made it different than it was before. Uh, I know your relationship with them and, and what they have meant and that family has meant to you in your career man they uh they definitely keep me young because uh i'm what 36 years old and i'm still playing and i'm still competing and i'm, I'm training more than ever Ooh. these days don't tell me that um, but the beauty, <laughs> yeah the beauty thing about it though I, I look at our sport as like um you know like marathon runners right the top the top marathon runners are the older ones uh they got the experience you know they just they just get it and they know how to win um I'm ready to I'm ready to pass the torch on it as soon as like you know the younger players you know start practicing and putting in the work and maybe we help build uh, the middle school high school and and the college um, idea in roller hockey so not too many players are you know they have the option to play roller hockey because there's an opportunity for them to go to college or something but um, going back to like where I'm at with my relationship with the with Palm is like they've always pushed me to set goals um, and for for an example like. Papa Mike, man, uh, has everything he wants in life, and and you know what he loves the most, and you know what's in his office are roller hockey trophies. Roller hockey trophies are filled up. So when I go in that office and we chat, I I I can't believe it. Like a guy that doesn't even have to be part of roller hockey, the roller hockey community, and he loves it so much. He loves the competition. He loves seeing, uh, just seeing good hockey and so I'm, I'm here to stay as long as I can so my body lets me um, I still have a few more goals that I want to accomplish with Palma so that's, that's what keeps me motivated um, but again for the family man I mean if you've seen the rink they have a they basically have a hall of fame they have they made their own hall of fame of Palma and uh, I was there last See night it. and uh, and, and it's just crazy that, that majority of that stuff in there, like a lot of the trophy and a lot of like the history is like I was part of since I was 17 years old. So it's, it's really neat to have a place like that. Because if you look at the dojo, I don't have any of my trophies in here because I'll either give them away to kids. I just give all my stuff away. And now I'm like, man, I wish I had that one. I wish I would have kept on to that one. But um, uh, Sabraj has it, pretty much all of them. So if I ever wanted to you know, go look at something, I can just go to his house and, and uh, nice. you know remember that uh that memory there so it, it all worked out but uh yeah no the family alone it, if if it wasn't for them again i would i'd probably be in a different community i'd be in a different uh, a different life probably and just for them to support our hockey when we're 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 young and you know us growing up we were fortunate to have like eight or nine kids that all started hockey at the same time and then we met the Nijars and it kind of just like was a perfect perfect mesh and we built our uh, Palma Cyclones team from there and so growing up with our you know childhood friends and and competing with each other it, it's the coolest thing ever and um, again like last night we we were skating at Sabraji's house and it was just nine of the closest friends that. Uh, we know and, and we had a great skate and that's what it's all about you know going out there and just like shooting the shit with people and like you know bantering and then hitting the oohs and the ahs when people are scoring and making moves and so that's what it's all about and it's, it's having a good time and um, just being with the brothers and friends and, and just enjoying the sport so i um, very happy about the sport and about you know meeting the, the Nijars and and all the people that you know came with it as well so again I'm hooked um, I'm happy to have my son Jan, who's one years old, uh, be part of the community as well and enjoy the experiences that what I experienced and, and uh, what I can do for the sport. 
tried to try try some new things here. You know, some innovative things that I thought the sport was missing, and maybe we tried try to do it uh, in the future. You know, and maybe uh, help these kids out um, to be able to stick to roller hockey and and make a future out of it. Whether it's you know, go play high school hockey, go play college hockey, go try a little bit of Europe, or maybe we make that uh, RHA. You know, that new uh, league that Dan made. We make that and we blow that up and kids have a future to go play, you know, pro hockey after, you know, college or, or whatnot. So, again, it's cool. I'm just enjoying the the, chance, the new, you know, just being part of the roller hockey and just trying to get creative with new things and, and trying to make, you know, it noticeable to the public eye. Well, buddy, I'll tell you what. Uh, I know I've said it a couple of times already, but so proud of you. So proud of just the person that you are and what you've done for the game. And I loved what you said about the Die Jars because I, I've, I've been there from their beginnings as well and just seeing what they have done for the sport of hockey and countless individuals. It's, uh, it's, it's truly, truly incredible. And you're a big part of that. And I know how much uh, they mean to you and you mean to them. And I think you summed it up best and it's the perfect way for us to end this first episode. Uh, this game is about that. It's about this brotherhood. It's about that family aspect. And uh, you certainly embody that, buddy. Congrats on all the success and, uh, and and best of luck with the Dangle Dojo. And can't wait to see you tearing it up on the rink out there. And try to try to take it easy on my partner, would you? <laughs> I will. No, no. It, it's, all, it's all training, right? You know, you, you let in a lot of goals and then finally figure it out and you become... Yeah, and you you have goal. a little more than I do, unfortunately. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. But, uh, Awesome for the game, man. I mean, what what he's doing on the social media and and how he's making it fun and doing and coming up with his own little skits and all that. I mean, it's just really, really good for the sport. Um, I think there needs to be more, um, I guess, characters and and more, uh, you know, people out there embracing the social media and and you know, having these characters out there because that's what it's that's how it's going to grow the sport you know um skateboarding Appreciate or that. wwe or any any other sports yeah. you know there, there's profiles on these players here and parker's really yeah. making that for himself and everybody knows parker as the as the goalie doing the, the <laughs> gopro videos and you know being silly out there and just having a good time and goofing around because uh that's what it's all about and, and enjoying it and at the same time you know he's putting in the work and getting a workout so uh yeah it's cool to see well, that all, so again to, i know to be honest really cool it, uh people. It really, it really started from you know your lead. I saw how much you were growing the game that I love, and I, I wanted to you know contribute to growing the game uh, as much as I could. And I saw that you know being you know bringing my personality to social media. So I, I appreciate everything you've done, and I feel like uh, for you know growing the game and the love of roller hockey has been like the theme of this episode. We talked about it with everybody, so you know yep. <laughs> it's been yep. great. Well, and be before we take off, uh, yes. Grab his, uh, his before oh, we take yeah. off, gotta introduce my little boy for Look at that world. little man. Future oh, all star right there. Guy. What's up, buddy? <laughs> no joke. So funny thing I, I tell everybody, like, is he gonna play hockey? I'm like, well, you better believe it, cause uh he's gonna be a goal he's gonna be a goalie. Cause I, I need something right. to shoot on. So. <laughs> so, yeah, little oh, man. man. So he's uh He's a character. He's keeping me going. And, uh, you know, this dojo is going to be for him if he wants it. And, um, you know, just, just to have a childhood in a rink and being able just to have fun and just, you know, grow with it and meeting all these friends and families, it's going to be good. So, again, thanks uh, for the time, guys. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, Eton. Buddy, so, so, so proud of you. So awesome to meet your little guy. I can't wait to see him in person. And just, uh, you keep doing what you're doing. And uh, we'll keep doing it here because uh, we got a real fun thing. And it's going to be a consistent thing. So make sure you join us on Thursdays for Hockey Night Insider. Follow us on our social medias. You know where those are all at. We'll keep you posted when we've got new episodes coming up. And Ethan, we're going to make you a regular, buddy. We'll have you back on again real soon. Sounds good. I'm happy to help out. So, again, good to see all the faces. Good to see you, Nick. Parker, you guys are awesome, man. You guys are doing a great thing, and uh, I'm glad to be part of it. So let's have a good time with this, all right? Yes, Sounds sir. Good, From uh, your lips to God's ears, no doubt about it. All right, well, a big thank you to all of our guests, of course, uh, Jake and Dan and Ethan, and for my partner, Parks. Uh, we'll do this again. Good good stuff, buddy. Good stuff. Sound, yeah, good time. Well, that's going to do it for our very first episode of Hockey Night Insider, presented by The Answer Is Yes. Parks, good stuff. Uh, that was a ton of fun, buddy. Thanks for being along for it. Absolutely. For the love of hockey, that's the theme. <laughs> 
And for the love of hockey, that's going to be our theme every single one of these episodes. And it's about growing the game. It's about that family and it's about that brotherhood. And you're going to get that every time you tune in. Uh, that's going to do it for all of us. The big thank you to all of our guests, to Jake, to Dan, to Ethan, and to my partner, Parker. I'm Nick Gizmondi. We'll see you next time on another new episode of Hockey Night Insider. King is dead!